Forticlined EMS is a Forticlined endpoint agent central management solution that provides the infrastructure to deploy and manage Forticlined software on endpoints. It is designed to maximize operational efficiency and includes automated capabilities for device management, endpoint telemetry visibility, endpoint VTNA posture check, security profile management, and troubleshooting. While FortiClient protects endpoints from viruses, threats, and risks, FortiClient EMS provides efficient and effective administration of endpoints running FortiClient. FortiClient EMS also shares endpoint telemetry and compliance tags with FortiGates and other fabric products. In this video, we will provide a brief introduction to setting up your FortiClient EMS. For full configuration details, please refer to the Administrator's Guide. Let's look at licensing first. If you are using FortiClient Cloud, EMS licenses will synchronize automatically from your FortiCare account, and you do not need to take any additional steps in this case. You just need to register your license contract on your FortiCare account. If you are using on-premise EMS, you will need to log in to your EMS and sync FortiClient licenses by using your FortiCare credentials. The dashboard, then status, and then license information widget displays your license statuses. FortiClient EMS installs with the default IP address and port configured. You can change the IP address and port and configure other server settings for FortiClient EMS. Let's look at configuring FQDN for remote endpoints. This can be found under System Settings and then EMS Settings. For external devices or devices that may leave the internal network, it is better to connect to EMS using a fully qualified domain name. FQDN is preferable for the following reasons. It is easy to migrate EMS to a different IP address. It also makes it easy to migrate to a different EMS instance and it is also flexible to dynamically resolve the FQDN. Moreover, it is required for EMS high availability setup. FortiClient EMS requires an SSL certificate. The web server certificate displays the SSL certificate currently used for the Apache service and the notify daemon. If desired, you can select another certificate from the drop-down list. Enable this to use the certificate uploaded in the Web Server Certificate field for endpoint control. When this option is enabled and for the client tries to connect to EMS using the endpoint control protocol, EMS sends the SSL certificate so that for the client can use the certificate to verify the connection. Do not confuse SSL certificate with EMS CA certificate. EMS has a default CA certificate that is used to secure connection between EMS and for the clients. When managing Chromebooks, enable EMS for Chromebook settings. When remote HTTPS is disabled, administrators can only log in to FortiClient EMS on the EMS server host. When remote HTTPS is enabled, administrators use a browser HTTPS connection to log in to FortiClient from any hosts. Predefined hostname displays the hostname of the server on which the FortiClient EMS is installed. You can also define a custom host name. Optionally, you can enter management IP and port for fabric connector configuration if the FortiGate connects indirectly. We can configure EMS alerts by going to system settings and then selecting SMTP server. You can set up an SMTP server to enable alerts for FortiClient EMS or endpoint events. When an alert is triggered, EMS sends an email notification. Next, we will look at configuring admin user accounts. You can configure users to have no access or administrator access to FortiClient EMS by adding EMS users, local Windows users, or LDAP users. You can define role-based access for each user and customize what access or permission each user gets. Each admin role can include permissions from three categories endpoint permissions, policy permissions, and settings permissions. Now let's look at endpoint user management. In user management, you can configure options 
for user verification for connecting for the client endpoints. So when a user downloads for the client and connects to EMS, they must sign into for the client with the preferred verification method of your choice to gain access to protected applications and services. EMS supports several user verification methods, which include local user credentials, where local users can be configured in the local user section under user management. I'll have domain credentials, SAML credentials, or you can register for the client without onboarding users. User management gives you the ability to review authorized groups, monitor verified users, and configure authentication methods. Invitation codes can be sent by email or SMS to specified groups using the verification method of your choice. You can refer to the user management section in the administrator's guide to learn more about user management and its setup process. Now let's look at adding endpoints to EMS. For the client EMS needs to determine which devices to manage. For Windows, Mac OS, and Linux endpoints, device information can come from an AD server, Azure AD server, or a manual for the client connection. To add endpoints using an AD domain server or an Azure AD server, you must add the respective AD server to EMS in authentication servers under the administration section. For the client EMS can also manage Google Chromebooks. For that, you will need to add a Google domain. Chromebook device information comes from the Google Admin Console. Adding for the client deployment packages. You can use for the client EMS to deploy for the client on domain and workgroup endpoints. In the domain scenario, you will need to prepare an Active Directory server and then add the AD server to EMS and create a profile before applying the deployment package. For the workgroup scenario, you only need to create a profile and apply deployment package. Now let's look at adding a profile. A profile defines configuration for the Forti client software on the endpoints. You can use the default profile and customize it as necessary or create a new profile. Forti client EMS has separate endpoint profiles for features like remote access, VTNA destinations, web filter, video filter, vulnerability scan, malware protection, sandbox, firewall, and system settings. For each endpoint profile type, you can use the default profile or create various profiles for different configurations and situations. You can then configure the desired combination of profiles in an endpoint policy and apply the policy to endpoints. You can also import profiles to EMS. Next, create a deployment package with the profile. Deployment packages include the Forti client installer, which includes the list of Forti client features to be installed on the endpoints and other settings related to Forti client installation. Deployment packages can also include a telemetry gateway list for connection to a Forti gate. You can configure invitation codes to email to end users. You may also embed invitation codes in Forti client installers. After installing Forti client, end users can enter the invitation codes to connect Forti client to EMS. After you deploy the endpoints, you can view the list of endpoints in the endpoints pane. You can also view details about each endpoint or use filters to access endpoints with specific qualities. You can manage endpoints from the endpoints pane. Here, you can run a vulnerability scan, patch detected vulnerabilities, or quarantine endpoints, and more. You can use group assignment rules to automatically place connected endpoints into custom groups based on their installer ID, IP address, or operating system. This way, profiles are automatically applied to the endpoints based on the endpoint group's assignment. You can also use the schedule run and run rules now buttons to check and reassign endpoints to different groups in case the endpoint IP address or logged in AD user changes or if a new for the client is installed. You can create zero trust tagging rules for Windows, Mac OS, 
and Linux endpoints based on their OS versions, logged-in domains, running processes, and other criteria. EMS uses these rules to dynamically group endpoints. Dynamic endpoint groups can be used in Dynamic 40 OS policy rules. You can view all dynamic endpoint groups in ZeroTrust tags and then ZeroTrust tag monitor. After defining ZeroTrust tagging rules in EMS, you can configure 40 OS to receive the dynamic endpoint groups from EMS using the 40 client EMS fabric connector, which supports SSL and imports trusted certificates. When a change to the dynamic endpoint groups occurs, such as an endpoint being added or removed from a group, EMS sends the update to 40 OS and 40 OS updates its dynamic policies accordingly, providing dynamic access control based on endpoint status. On the ZeroTrust Tag Monitor page, you can view all the dynamic endpoint groups based on the tag configured for each rule. This page shows endpoints with tag types based on ZeroTrust 40 Guard Outbreak Alerts, Classification, and Fabric Tags. Endpoint policies help assign endpoint profiles to groups of endpoints. The Endpoint Policy page provides a comprehensive summary of which endpoint profiles are applied to which endpoint groups. When a change to the dynamic endpoint groups occurs, such as an endpoint being added to or removed from a group, EMS sends the update to 40 OS, and 40 OS updates its dynamic policies accordingly, providing dynamic access control based on endpoint status. So, endpoints can be assigned a different endpoint profile based on whether they are on or off the corporate network. You can centrally view a list of software installed on all endpoints. The list includes details for each application, such as vendor and version information. You can view this information by application or vendor on the Applications pane or by host on the Hosts pane. FortiClient sends installed application information to FortiClient EMS. EMS sends software inventory logs to FortiAnalyzer for real-time and historic logging and reporting. FortiClient sends the software inventory information to EMS when it first registers to EMS. If software changes occur on the endpoint, such as installing a new software or updating or removing an existing software, FortiClient sends an updated inventory to EMS and EMS sends the changes to FortiAnalyzer. Quarantine management. You can view and allow list files that 40 Sandbox or AV has quarantined from a central management files pane. You can also view and delete allow listed files from the allow list pane. FortiClient sends quarantined file information to FortiClient EMS. The FortiClient EMS administrator can view quarantined file information for all managed endpoints on the files pane and allow list files from the FortiClient EMS if needed. EMS dashboard uses widgets to show summary information about the system and the endpoints. System information shows the name of the computer where you have installed FortiClient EMS, version number, options to backup and restore the database, and more. License information widget shows serial number for FortiClient EMS, FortiCloud account, and licensing information. The endpoint management chart displays endpoints statistics with different categories. You can also add and remove widgets to create your own customized view. In addition, you can drill down chart information to view specific details. Go to Dashboard and then Vulnerability Scan to view a variety of charts and widgets containing a summary of vulnerability scan information from endpoints. With this, we conclude our video. For full configuration details, please refer to the EMS Administrator's Guide. And for more technical videos, please visit video.fortinet.com.